When speaking of her uncle, George Gunn III, Catherine Gunn said, Cattle ranching, cowboy poetry, horseback riding. The American West to George was Native American art and culture, bison, the importance of being a cowboy, camping, riding or fishing in the cold, jeans, khakis, dirt, informality, howdy. And may I add, late. In the fall of 2003, as was his custom, George was to visit the ranch and ride up Segundo Canyon with Tom and Travis Miller to camp overnight and then gather and bring down the last of the cows and calves. He was to arrive at the ranch around noon to start the four to five hour ride to camp. At three in the afternoon, his plane still hadn't landed in Elko, so Travis took the pack horse and went up the canyon so he could set up camp with a little bit of daylight. George arrived well after dark, and he and Tom set off on the long ride. Tom recalls, It was black dark by the time we actually started up Lower Long Canyon. Some nights are darker than others. This was one of the darkest. We made our way along those steep trails, and finally the moon started to come up. It was directly in front of us, and in a few minutes was completely up, huge and full to the point where we were actually just as blind as without light at all. We reached the place where we crossed Long Creek into Segundo, turning back west, the moon behind us. It was just like daytime for the 20 minutes it took before we turned south up Segundo. At this point, the moon disappeared, and it was black dark again. George made the comment at the time that, I'm glad I'm riding a horse that knows where he is, because I don't know. The last part of the ride was a trail that was bushy with aspen, wild roses, and a few cottonwoods. You couldn't see them at all until they hit you in the face trying to drag you off your horse. We made it to Travis's camp at 11.30. He had a big fire as it was cold as heck, and T-bone steaks, which we ate with our hands while standing as close as we could to the fire. George loved every second of it. The next morning we woke him before daylight, which you never had to do as he was always raring to go. He said that may have been the best ride he was ever on, and that that was the best night's sleep he'd had in years. George loved the ranch. He brought visitors from all over the world and wanted to share the beauty of the ranch with others, although not quite always in the way one would expect, as experienced by Tom Ludy and recorded in the book George by Catherine and Theo Gund. Tom said, One day, George showed up at the Pacific Film Archive. He knew that I love Russian and Eastern European films as much as he did. He had a Bulgarian filmmaker with him. He said, This is my friend Christo Drumov. He is the head of the Bulgarian Cinema Association. He's been visiting me at my ranch in Elko. Mr. Drumov will fly you to Bulgaria business class and show you all the Bulgarian films. If you would like to do a retrospective here, Tom recalled George saying. That would be interesting. I have never been to Bulgaria, Tom said. But there's one thing, George added. Mr. Drumoff has a friend in the Ministry of Agriculture. He would like to have some bull sperm from my bulls and would like you to carry it on the flight when you come to Bulgaria. Only George Gund would ask you to carry bull sperm to Bulgaria as a gift. This was 1973 or 1974. As I was leaving, they handed me a big lead container with dry ice. It felt like I was carrying some uranium. There weren't anything like the security measures of today at the airport, so I didn't think anything of it. But somebody took me aside and said, What is this? I said what it was, and they said, Well, you're not allowed to take an agricultural treasure from America to a communist country. They seized it from me, but I had no way to communicate that to Bulgaria. I got on the plane and was greeted in Bulgaria. But when he realized that I didn't have it with me, he got rather cold and turned me over to another person. I was a second-class citizen in Bulgaria. George Gund achieved many things in his life, but he never became Bulgaria's Louis Pasteur. On one visit to the ranch in Lee, George said, Yeah, I think I want some buffalo on the ranch. I've been reading about them in a book. So we began building stronger and higher fences, and in April of 2008, we introduced buffalo to the ranch. At first, I wondered why he wanted them. Now, I understand. George and buffalo. They are a lot alike. Free roaming. Mysterious. 
Brawny, yet light on their feet. A unique language. And beautiful.